focused on the first paragraph of Shema. Today, at long last, I'd like to shift to the second paragraph, uh, which is less well known to many of you because it is not included in the Reform Siddur for reasons that I'll get to in just a few moments. And even in more traditional services, uh, as in our own Shabbat morning service from the conservative uh, Lev Shalem, it's recited quietly and not emphasized so much. The second paragraph of Shema uh, comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verses 13 through 21. And it begins, V'hayayim shamoa, if you heed my commandments. What follows is God's promise of reward if we follow the mitzvot, and God's threat of punishment if we don't. The reward is rain and a good harvest, agricultural bounty. The punishment for failing to follow the mitzvot is drought and famine and exile. Now it's worth noting, and you wouldn't know this from reading the English, in which we have you singular and you plural is the same word, but in the Hebrew we see that the language shifts here. In the first paragraph of Shema, God addresses the individual you, you. Uh, in the second paragraph, where we're focusing now, the words are addressed to the communal, you all. In other words, the rewards and punishments described in this paragraph are national in their scope. You don't get rain for your own farm or for your family's farm if you're good when no one else is. Nor do you get punished with drought if you're a rotten human being, but everybody else around you is good. The fate of the nation is bound together, uh, and we all thrive or we all suffer accordingly, according to the path of, of the majority of the culture. But even at a national level, uh, this paragraph uh, is challenging. For in truth, anybody who has any life experience or has studied any history knows that the relationship between behavior and reward and punishment is complicated at best. There is no simple calculus of if you are good, life will be good, and if you're bad, life will be bad. We know that our choices do affect our environment. They affect our fate, but we can't fathom divine justice. Often the good suffer deeply and the bad prosper. And on the national level too, moral nations don't necessarily fare better, at least materially, than immoral ones. Or for that matter, uh, the whole notion of moral and immoral nations as a whole is problematic at best. And this is why in many liberal Sidorim, including Mishkan Tefila, this paragraph is left out. It's just too theologically unpalatable. It jars too much with our experienced reality where there is no simple reward and punishment. It's too difficult to accept this kind of easy calculus uh, in which we're rewarded for our virtues as the Jewish people and punished for our failings. Certainly anyone who thinks about the Shoah and thinks of that as a punishment 
uh, has deeper theological and, in my view, ethical problems than I can comment on this morning. So I understand the sentiment of expunging the passage because I too can't stomach it on a literal level. But I'm not a fan of just deleting difficult sections of our liturgy. I prefer, when possible, to keep them and to wrestle with them. So in that spirit, I'd like to offer a wise and beautiful commentary by feminist Jewish theologian Judith Plaskow. In My People's Prayer Book, she writes, It's not necessary to read this paragraph of Shema as a literal statement about reward and punishment. In a world where our survival, the world's survival, creation's survival, depends partly on our human capacity to value creation and care for it wisely, it is possible to interpret this passage more naturalistically. If we are to develop an ecological consciousness, if we treat the earth with respect, if we are aware that we are embedded in a great web of life in which God is the ultimate source and sustainer, then the earth will bear fruit for us, and the rain will come in its season. But if we believe, as we have, that we can trample on or transcend the constraints of nature, if we forget the sacredness of all things and make idols of our own wealth and power, the earth will not grant its produce, and both we and our world may perish. She notes that in a Sidur Birkat Shalom, we find these ideas expressed in a meditation that notes, Israel, your covenant with God is made of choices, holiness or profanity, life or destruction. You can never keep from choosing. If you set yourself to love God with everything that you have, God's gifts will be yours, a vital earth that sees and sun snow and clouds forming and changing. But if you forget God and choose to fashion and worship gods of your own, you may lose everything you have. This blue-green earth, so beautiful, so solitary, is as fragile as you are and as precious. Beware, lest in giving way to excess, you risk too much. So let's take a few moments now and reflect on the complicated nexus between our choices, individual and communal, and the consequences of those choices. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Our Omer count, we are on the penultimate day with Shavuot beginning uh, tomorrow night. Our focus, Yesod in Malchut, fundamental majesty. Rabbi Kerry Olitsky writes, In what ways do I experience the majesty of the covenant between me and the Holy One? While many people started as children at the onset of our journey in the desert, they were not destined to complete it. Sometimes we can only go so far. Along the way, we are struck by the enormity of the task, but urged on by the majesty of the Holy One. We have to be satisfied with how far we have come and not with how far we have yet to go. 
We let our children, we let the next generation do the rest. That is why we must all go into the desert. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu v'tzvotah v'tzivanu al svirat haomer hayom shmona v'arbaim yom shehem shisha shavuot v'shisha yamim l'omer Today is the 48th day of the Omer, six weeks and six days. Tomorrow evening, uh, we will have our Tikkun Leil Shavuot. We're participating with small congregations across the country. See your eblast and the website for how you can participate and choose one of many, many, many classes, learning options. Uh, Friday night at 6 p.m., Saturday morning at 10 p.m., We'll be celebrating both Shavuot and Shabbat. And on Saturday morning, we will have our Yizkor uh, memorial service. So again, uh, Boker Tov. Have a good day.